Don't lick the SIGS tube. <laughs> if, if, yeah. you, if you break it, throw it away. Don't smash it. If you break it, throw it, throw it away. It. Yeah, don't suck on it. It's, okay. I think it's pretty safe. Hi, this is Katie Farrenbacher with GigaOM TV's Green Overdrive Show, and I'm here with Michael Ahern, who works for Solyndra, a solar panel maker, and he electrified his Volvo, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the electrification process and how the solar panels are charging his car. So you basically, on your own, stripped out the engine, a lot of the weight of the car, and you put a whole bunch of batteries in the car. Uh, yeah, an electric motor. Yeah. Uh -huh. My daughter helped me. She helped me get the engine out and, and do some of the conversion, put the batteries in. Over the course of about a year, I uh, converted it completely electric. All right. So these are half the batteries right here, right? These are four out of 12, so a third, yeah. And uh, the other eight are in the trunk. Uh, they're lead acid batteries, deep cycle lead acid batteries. And uh, they power this uh, electric motor that is uh, controlled by this thing called the controller, the Curtis controller, and it has a thing called pulse width modulation where it, it gives pulses of this 144 volts to the motor and it powers the car through the original standard uh, transmission. And you went with lead acid for cost reasons, just to yeah, make yeah. the process a little bit less painful on your wallet. Yeah, uh, I know some people now, I'm an electric car club and I know some people that have done lithium and I always thought if if these uh, if these die, I'd I'd switch it to lithium because that is the that's the more uh, the lighter weight setup and a little bit more mileage. But to keep keep the cost low and to start the project, I thought I'd I'd start with lead acid. And so far, so good. Yeah. I've got uh, 5,000 miles in the car and no problems. And you drive to work every day. Yeah, pretty much every day. And what's the um, the time it takes to charge? It takes uh, eight hours to charge if it's completely dead, and that's a 40 mile range. So Michael, show us how it works. How it works is uh, you turn the key to uh, actuate one of the contactors. When you do it, you hear that little uh, putter putter sound. That's the uh, that's the electric vacuum pump that runs the power brakes. And so it's ready to go now. And so this car has a, a stick shift but no clutch. And it's a little tricky, but now we're going. And you hear that whine because uh, the controller is a uh, 2.5 kilohertz. Uh, pulse width modulation until you get more than 10% of the throttle, then it goes silent. So, uh, okay. you get a little faster. It so, goes, when we go it faster, goes it goes away. So and now you, I you just, took the clutch off? Yeah, the clutch is totally gone. There's no clutch pedal. But now we're in second gear. Now we're rolling. Nice. Well, how fast can you drive it? I've gone 70. I can go fast. What kind of advice would you give to people who want to convert their cars DIY style? Well, what I, the advice I'd give them is baby steps. I would say, if you if you look at the big project and you see all the parts and all the things you have to do, it's pretty daunting. But if the first thing you do is you say, all right, it's gonna take a while, I've got a place in my garage and I've got some tools and I, and I know what I'm doing, then you can do it. And so step one is find the car. Find a car you love. And this is a car I absolutely love. I love Volvos and I love the 240 in particular. And then the first step is find your car, and there's a lot of cars with junk engines out there, and you can get them real cheap on Craigslist. And that's where you got this one, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, $150, it was in Watsonville, and it was on Craigslist. This cost you $150? Yeah, $150. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I kept the prices low. I, I challenge anybody to do a more economical electric car conversion than this one. I, uh, my, whole, my whole career is about keeping costs down. That's what I do. How much do you think you did it for? Or under several about, thousand? About, about seven grand. And you know, the biggest cost in there is that, you know, twenty four hundred dollars in batteries. Yeah. It's probably the, the biggest chunk. And then I know where the big ticket items are. The, and I but the another good thing about the conversion is I didn't have to pay it all up front at once. I had, you know, the first I bought the car for hundred and fifty dollars and then a month or two later I bought the motor for fifteen hundred and then I worked on that for a while. It's, I think it took about a hundred hours total for me and my daughter, and it was uh, it was it was about a hundred hours over over a year. So maybe two hours every weekend for a year. All right. So we just drove around the block. We took out some of the battery charge. So let's plug it back in. Okay. So 
this goes in here. And then this goes uh, into here. So um, the power comes off the roof onto this, and it goes into, uh, this is the DC disconnect, and then it goes into this thing. This thing is called an inverter. This is a crucial system to any solar system because what solar panels do is they make DC power, just voltage. But what the house uses is AC, alternating current. You know, the difference between alternating current and direct current. And this is an inverter that takes uh, the voltage and the, the, the current from my panels and it inverts it and it matches it with the, uh, the power coming from PG&E at 60 hertz. Okay. Here's the part where the meter goes backwards. And uh, this is, see it even put a sticker on it, meter runs both directions. They put that so you'd know. And so right now you can see that, that when the arrow's pointing back at the telephone pole, it means that we're, we're making more than we're using. All right, so the first thing I notice is just how bright it is out here. Yeah, yeah, this is a, this is a white foam roof and uh, that's good for cylinder panels because cylinder panels can get power from underneath. So we, uh, on average, you can get around 20% of the power actually reflects off the roof and gets the, gets the panel from underneath. The install of, this, of these panels, they don't need to be uh, attached to the roof. They're just sitting on, on these stands and uh, that makes installation much easier. All right, Michael, thank you so much for showing us your Solyndra rooftop solar panels and your electric Volvo. I think this is the only combination like this in the world, and uh, we really appreciate you showing it to us. Well, thanks. I'm happy to show it.